In the last two episodes, we looked at some of the basics of running an interview format podcast. It is now time to get into the real action and find guests and get them on your show. So in this episode, we will be talking about how to find podcast guests, tips on a good outreach method, and things to keep in mind when you shortlist your guests. And you might want to listen to the episode till the end when I will share a nifty little tip on getting the best out of your podcast guest. Welcome to the Podcasting University. Looking for help on starting your own podcast? Then this is the place to be. We will help you with everything from selecting your topic to promoting and monetizing your podcast in the simplest language possible. Listen to other podcasters who've been through the grind and learn from them as we interview them every week. You can find more details on thepodcastinguniversity.com. Hello and welcome to episode 67 of The Podcasting University. This is Dilip, your host, and today we are going to look at part 3 in the series on interview format podcasts. Now that we are ready with everything, let us get into the real part where the entire action lies finding podcast guests and reaching out to them. So today, I will share with you some very important resources and some tips on how to find podcast guests and also share with you some tips to ensure that your outreach is a success. So let us first get started with how to find podcast guests for your show. Now, there are a lot of these services that are available today which helps podcasters match to guests who are ready to come on podcasts. Now, these services provide you with a lot of information like, for example, the expertise of these guests, what are the other shows that they've been on, and they give you a lot of the background for these guests. So you don't have to go out there and do a lot of this digging and researching to get all of this information. These matching services are excellent, can reduce a lot of time that you would otherwise be spending on finding guests and will help you get good guests for your show. But the only caveat is that most of these services are paid services. So there will be a charge. Though they also offer you a free option, but but the free option has a lot of limitations. So you might not be able to find a lot of guests using the free option, but you can always try their free options. And if you think it is worth you can always go and buy their premium service. So let us look at some of these services that I recommend. My favorite and the recommended service is matchmaker.fm. Now matchmaker.fm gives you a lot of information about prospective guests. You can go out there, do a lot of research, see if your guests match with your requirements and accordingly go and directly interact with these guests and book them for your show. Matchmaker.fm has a free option and also has a premium option. So if you're serious about getting guests, you might want to look at the premium option for matchmaker.fm. Now, something that is very comparative and similar to that of matchmaker.fm is Podmatch. Podmatch, again, is a premium service. They also have a very limited free option available, which doesn't give you a lot of information, but still is good to go and check if that is something that fits you or fits your requirement so you might want to give it a try but then you will have to go in for the premium option if you're looking at podcasting with guests as a long-term option so third service that i recommend is podcastguests.com now this is a free service and i would recommend this service for you if you are tight on your budget podcastguests.com is an amazing service they send you periodic emails with a list of the guests and they also have a lot of those good guests on their list who would be ready to come on your show and talk about whatever topics that you want them to talk about. So it's a very nice service for people who don't want to spend money on these guest matching services. So podcastguest.com is something that I would recommend for you if you are on a budget. The fourth service that I would recommend is Podchaser Connect. Now Podchaser has just been acquired by Acast. Acast is my favorite hosting platform the hosting platform on which I host my podcast. Now they've acquired Podchaser and Podchaser has a subsidiary service which is called as Podchaser Connect 
which basically gives you access to some of these guests who are looking for appearances on podcasts. So you might want to use their service. I haven't used their service a lot, but I hear good things about Podchaser Connect. So you might want to go and try them and see if it works for you. The fifth service that I would recommend is Radio Guest List. Now, Radio Guest List is another free service, but there is also an upgraded option available, which will give you much more features and much more control over how to go about finding guests. But the free service in itself is more than enough for anybody who is getting started. They also have a lot of options to reach out to some of these good guests. So you might want to give them also a try. The sixth option is the Podcast Collaborative. Now, the Podcast Collaborative is a premium service. They are excellent. Their feedback is amazing. They have a very good guest matching service, but it comes at a cost. So it is a premium service. You will have to subscribe to their service if you want to get access to the guests that are there on their list. Now, this is run by a marketer by the name of Sarah. And Sarah also has a Facebook group where you can go and uh, list your requirement on uh, be a guest if you want to appear as guests on other podcasts or find a guest if you're looking for guests for your podcast. But the Podcast Collaborative is an amazing resource if you're looking at finding guests for your podcast. We're almost five minutes into today's episode and I'm hoping that you are enjoying the conversation until now. If you are, then then please do consider referring this podcast to your friends, your family and your social media circles. Whoever is interested in getting started a podcast, they'll be able to find a lot of value in this show. So do consider referring the Podcasting University to people who you think will benefit from this information. Now, let's continue with the conversation. And the seventh option that I would recommend is Facebook groups. Now, if you go and search for Facebook groups or Facebook communities, you will find a lot of these podcasting communities where uh, you have an option of going and posting a find a guest uh, requirement for which people will respond. They'll let you know what their credentials are, what their expertise is. And depending upon what uh, you decide, you can always go and book those people as guests for your show. What I usually do, I use one or two of these services, but what I usually do is I use social media. And that is something that I would recommend to you if you don't want to spend a lot of money on these podcast matching services. But for that, you have to be active on social media and you have to spend a lot of time looking for guests. It is a lot of, it's a lot of time consuming activity. So you will have to ensure that you have that time on your hand if you're planning to use social media. So what I usually do is I go and search for people in my industry. And when I see that there are people who are sharing valuable content or or who has a podcast, I go and follow them and do a little more research to understand their contributions to the community and what is the value that they can provide if I am to invite them as guests on my show. Now, after all of these research, I use social media to reach out to them. I'll do a direct message to them. I'll talk to them. And depending upon what their response is, I'll go and book them for my podcast. Now, that's the simplest method to find a guest, but then it needs a lot of time and effort because you will have to manually go and search for these guests on social media. Now, there are a lot of these Facebook groups. You can go and join groups in your specific niche. There is a group on pretty much every topic on Facebook. So just go and search, join those Facebook groups And once you have been an active member in that group, you can always request people to refer guests for your podcast or you can post your requirement there and let people reach out to you, people who are interested in coming to your show as a guest. The fourth thing that I would uh, recommend is that uh, you should use your initial guests circles to get more guests for your show. So leverage that initial guest. When you've interviewed or when you've interacted with them, once your interview is out, you can always reach out to them and check with them if they know or if they would like to refer some people from their circles as a guest on your show. Most guests will be extremely willing to share uh, people that they know or uh, talk to them and tell them about you and refer them for your podcast. But the only thing is that ask politely 
if they would like to recommend and don't intrude into anybody's privacy. Number five, what I would recommend is that you leverage your network as well. Now, if you've already been into whatever it is that you're planning to do in your podcast, for example, the niche that you are in, for example, if you are a food blogger and you've been into food blogging for some time and you're planning to start a podcast, then you've been into that for quite some time. So there is some network that you would have built for yourself. You can always leverage that network to find guests. It's a strategy that a lot of podcasters use. And uh, you will see me talking to Karthik Vijaykumar, who runs uh, a very successful podcast in episode 12, where he shares this strategy, which is something that he used to find his initial guests. Number six, you can always go and search on Google. Now, these are all time consuming activities, but it can give you access to a lot of those people who would be willing to come on your show as guests. So all that you will want to do is just search for your industry. You will be getting a list of websites. Make a list of all of those websites and go into each of those websites and see who are the people who are running those websites or who are the people who are running those blogs. Now, when they are running those blogs, it essentially means or you can assume that they are experts on that specific topic. Why not reach out to them and ask if they would be willing to come on your show? So that's something that you can always do. And you know that there are a ton of blogs that are available on the internet on pretty much everything. But the only thing is that you will want to do your due diligence in terms of researching your guests to ensure that they can provide value to your audience. So searching on Google is an amazing way of finding a lot of guests for your show. And finally, there are a lot of those other podcasts that you can search on. So I would recommend going to Apple Podcasts and searching for podcasts in your niche. You can listen to a few of their episodes or just go through the podcast titles and you will find that there would be guests who would have appeared on those episodes or those podcasts. They are people that you can always reach out to and see if they would be willing to come on your show. Now, if they are now something that you might want to keep in mind is that you will have to get value from these guests that none of the other podcasts were able to do. So for that, you will have to use a very nifty little strategy that I'll be sharing towards the end of the show. So don't forget to listen to this episode till the end. I will share this strategy with you then. Now that we've seen how to find podcast guests for your show, let us look at doing the guest outreach. How do you approach these guests and ensure that it doesn't end up in a rejection? So here are some of the tips to keep in mind when you're reaching out to your guests. Number one, don't be fake. Now, I sometimes get a lot of these guest posting emails from people who say that they are a fan of my blog and that they've been reading my posts for years together. But then the kind of topics that they send me has no connection to what I've been writing for years or what my blog stands for, which clearly shows that they don't know me, they don't know my writing style, and they don't even know my blog niche. So be truthful to your guests. Don't fake that you are a fan. Number two, start on point. Don't start with unnecessary flattery. Almost all your guests that you're approaching know the reason why you're reaching out to them and they can see through your flattery. So start on point and tell them about who you are and why you are reaching out to them. You can then write maybe a line or two on how you found them and why you like their work, etc. And you can also add a few links uh, to your earlier interviews or even give them a link to your website so they can find more about you. But whatever it is that you do, ensure that you're starting your outreach message on point. Number three, make it easy for your guests. Now, setting up an interview can take multiple to and fro on emails. Now, this can be cut and a lot of the wasted time can be saved if you be a little more organized. You can use a calendar, which is one of the many things that you can use to stay organized. There are a couple of calendar tools that I had recommended in my last episode. TidyCal is my favorite uh, tool. You can always go and check them out. I leave the link in the show notes. But whatever it is that you use, ensure that you're organized and you're making it easy for your guests to book a slot and come on your show. Number four, don't exaggerate the benefits to your guests. Now, a lot of people take this approach of exaggerating the benefits to their guests just because they want to tell them what's in it for them. Because they think if they are able to tell their guests 
what's in it for their guests then the likelihood of them agreeing to come on your podcast increases that is true but don't exaggerate it outreach to guests work well if you can tell them how coming on your show will benefit them but it necessarily might not be a big benefit to your guest especially if you're just starting off so you don't need to exaggerate your reach and your benefits etc just be truthful you can tell your guest that yours is a growing podcast and they can get access to a new audience by coming on your show etc but limit it limit it to whatever is true now that we've looked at some of these tips for guest outreach there are a couple of things that i wanted to tell you about shortlisting guests now these are few things that you need to ensure that you're keeping in mind when you're researching your guests because that will help you get good guests on your podcast. Number one, there are two reasons why you would want a guest. First is if the guest has a huge following on the internet and you would like to leverage their audience. These guests can be both inspiration for your audience and also can be an expert. And the second type of guests that you would want on your show are the guests who can add value in terms of knowledge and information. Now the usual tendency is to go for the first type of guest that I just spoke about because they are influencers, they have huge following and you see a method of increasing listenership by bringing them on your show. But what I recommend is ensure that you are maintaining a balance of both these type of guests because these guests might necessarily not share your episode with their social media circles. It might not happen and your objective with bringing them on your show might not be fulfilled. So what you need to keep in mind is that your objective with bringing a guest on your podcast is to provide value to your audience. So bring in some of those guests who aren't big names in the industry, but can provide value in terms of knowledge and information. Number two, ensure that your guest is relevant to your niche or can provide value that is relevant to your niche. I had brought in Brendan Kumaraswamy some time back. Though Brendan doesn't have a podcasting background, I brought him in because he has excellent knowledge about public speaking and I knew that he could add value to my audience and in fact he was able to provide a lot of value to my audience. That episode was one of the most listened to episodes in my podcast. So when you research guests and when you look at guests who you want to bring into your episode, look for guests who are relevant to your niche or who can add value to whatever it is that you are trying to solve for your audience. Don't bring in somebody who doesn't have any connection with whatever it is that you're trying to do with your podcast. Getting a guest on your podcast isn't difficult. The only thing is to be truthful and straightforward with your guests. Now, I hope that the tips that I shared in today's episode will help you draft a good outreach email to your podcast guests and also help you find podcast guests for your show. Now, finally, on to my tip. You want your guests to share unique tips and value on your podcast. But some of your guests would have appeared on multiple other podcasts and finding where they appeared and what they spoke about can be difficult because the questions that you are planning to ask them might be something that other podcasters would also have asked them and they would have answered those questions. So doing that as a repetitive activity doesn't make sense. It is not going to provide any additional value to your audience. So how do you know what all podcasts these guests appeared on and what is the information that they've already shared? I use a website called owltail.com where you can search for a guest name and all of the podcasts where they appeared as guests will show up. Listen to the episodes and make notes. Then frame unique questions for your show and you will be able to get unique value from your guests. So that's all that I have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed all of the tips that I shared in this episode. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe to the Podcasting University because that way you won't miss any of the episodes that I release. Do visit the podcastinguniversity.com forward slash 67 for the show notes and the printable transcript for this episode. And also be and I'll also be sharing all of the resources that I just mentioned in there, the links to all of these resources on the show notes there. So don't forget to visit the podcastinguniversity.com forward slash 67 for the show notes. The Podcasting University is available on pretty much all podcasting platforms. So you can pick your favorite podcasting platform and give it a listen there. You'll also be able to find the links to the prominent platform on the podcastinguniversity.com forward slash 67. Now, if you're new to podcasting, I would recommend that you join my free podcasting course 
which is a 10 day e course where you will learn everything that you need to know about getting started with your podcast that's all that i have for this week i'll be back again the next week with more podcasting related tips until then keep listening to the podcasting university this is goodbye from dilip you all have a wonderful rest of the week